like going straight across from Del Rio to Sam Rayburn for the second southwestern division Costa supposed to be on Grand Lake but then they flip-flopped it I think it was a great call by FLW Sam Rayburn is six feet high with it high I think it might be a flipping deal about a seven and a half hour drive across the middle of nowhere in Texas it is Sunday about 5 45 a.m first day of practice staying here at the Rayburn Inn which is right next to the stump I'm sure we'll go there multiple times this week probably one of the most historic bass fishing related restaurants in the United States there is a lot of water to cover before Thursday a lot of fish in this lake though I think I'm gonna go down and put it in Castle Boinkins today Let's see how that goes First Rayburn bass, and it's about eight flips in. Well, we're about a half hour in, first day of practice. We already had like six flipping bites, a three pounder, a two and a half. I'm not a huge fan of catching them, like just putting the boat in and starting to catch them. I mean, I'll take it. There's a lot of water here. I'm gonna keep flipping and see if I can't figure out a pattern on where the better fish have been. Both of those fish have been on the side of points on hardwoods, uh, both of them on willows. It's fun though. I mean, 25 pound Sunline shooter, 7.9 extra heavy. You just flip in there, it's just like stomp. All right, Monday morning, I got my boy Dylan Thompson who's gonna practice with me the rest of the time. Yesterday went uh, really good as far as getting bites and getting confidence. A lot of those fish flipping. I probably had 30 keepers out of the bushes, but I set the hook on everything because I just didn't find any of those bigger fish. There are some really good guys that are fishing at this tournament. Russell Cecil, Todd Castle died, Brad Hallman, Keith Combs. It's gonna be a fun one. I mean, my theory is there's no way I can keep up with those guys offshore, but I feel like I can flip pretty damn good. Yeah. Interesting. It's a jig for a bigger bite. Or try it anyway. See what he's doing is he's he's fishing some different something different. Like we see, we got out here and everything was bigger. Did you notice that? The more I flip, the more I realize I think I need to be flipping. There's just no way to keep pace with these guys offshore. Like the guys who know how to fish offshore are just like 
these are probably some of the best offshore fishermen uh, you know outside of the TVA guys uh, gonna keep flipping and uh, actually went with the uh, with a hitchhiker so no hook now so shaking them off probably shaking off a lot of two pounders but you gotta start somewhere Never know. Good lord. That's a big one. Oh my. Hey gone. Mm. That was that was a whole different ball game once I set the hook on that one. Big one. Nice. nice one. Mm -hmm. Very nice one. Two and a half? Yep. Well, that was day three. It is uh, about 3.34, but I haven't been killing myself these days. Had a big bite today. Had a couple good ones. Added one more good area. It's a two-rod tournament. Well, maybe. Now, nah, I'm going to throw a swim jig a little bit. Maybe. But for the most part, it is uh, flipping 101. Kind of have a deal in the mornings more on the willows and the bushes and oh my gosh that uh, that metal there is really hot <laughs> and then in the afternoons uh they get up underneath the cypress so had one over four pretty much every had one over four pretty much every day um and one more day to kind of figure it out and get dialed in and i just lost a tungsten it's three quarter ounces. That was a seven dollar pitch. That sucks, but all right, Tuesday in the books. Came over to another area, final day of practice. Just gonna come out for four hours and third flip. Punch skirt, three quarter ounce weight, no hook, screw lock just to feel it. And Dylan has one in the back. Hello? Hi, it's Veronica there. Uh, it's the wrong number. Probably you can help me. This is Was that a recording? It's about 8.30 in the morning, Wednesday of practice. Last day, I wanted to come out and check an area called Deer Stand and shook off 19 in the first hour and a half. Some of them felt good, so definitely going to add this. I might even start here. I'm not sure where I can run here, though. Someone just ran past me, but there's standing timber everywhere, so... Well, it is Wednesday night. Tournament starts in the morning. We're at the Rayburn Inn. Boat's out there. 
All the compartments are still open on it. I got rods everywhere. I got tackle everywhere. It's almost 10 o'clock. I am not ready to go because it is game seven of the Stanley Cup Finals. And the Blues are leading 3 nothing. That's John from the Bass Tank. And uh, I've been a Blues fan since I was like a little kid. Uh, I grew up playing hockey, played junior hockey, uh, and played uh, club hockey at the University of Oklahoma. But, uh, you know, growing up in Illinois, I was only like two and a half hours from the Blues. So I've always been a big Blues fan. So, I mean, Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Finals, and they've never won it. They're up 3-0. I don't know if that's like a good omen. It's got to be a good omen for tomorrow. Like, first flip, five-pounder. Pretty excited, though. It's like seven minutes left in the game were you yelling at the t were you yelling at the tv yeah oh yeah 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 it was, it was yeah it's, no, when they got that fourth goal i said they got it they got it <laughs> yeah that was awesome yeah yeah so are you not ready am i ready no i'm not ready no no i still got a bunch to do <laughs> yeah, I'll be ready to go. 4.30, I'm at the boat launch. Okay, number six, and you'll be checking in at two, huh? Yep, boat number six, check in at two. Okay. All right, they're about to give him the cup. All right, see ya. Okay, man, have a good night's sleep. Bye. All right, morning and day one is about 5.30. Uh, boat number six this morning, so... I'm gonna make a run up uh, past the bridge and start flipping for uh, seven hours and then make the drive back. So, looks like we're gonna be able to smooth sail up there. The uh, wind isn't bad at all. So, looking forward to it. I think uh, if, you, uh, if you listen to BTL, Jeffries always talks about if you didn't win the tournament, you lose. Well, in this one, I think a top 35 is a win for me. That's what I'm, I'm calling that. Just uh, 13 to 15 pounds a day, solid, flip it, and then if you get a big bite, like a big bite, and go from there. But like one, four to six pounder a day is going to be crucial. Just getting it out of that bush, out of the willow, out of the out of the cypress, and, uh, and in the boat. Up here? Yeah. Well, usually up in here, this place is packed with eagles. Big old eagles. Big and There's number two. That's a two-pounder. Needed that one. Yeah. That's a great three, start. Three and a quarter probably, huh? Four yeah, that'll go three and a half. Oh, that'll go three and a half. Get that worm bite working. That's what I'm trying to do. I mean, I'm picking off high percentage stuff first thing in the morning. Once we settle down, you'll have, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, hey, I don't understand first. I got a picture on my phone. Got it. 
You know what I mean? Like that's a quality bite right now. In my opinion, I mean maybe yeah. I'm just missing the boat. Just when you think you got it figured out and you walk in off top, that's when you go out and put a big goose egg up on the board. Exactly. Number four. That's a little guy. I'm legit scared to go up there. When the baby sticks its head up, that's when it probably goes into freaking <laughs> full-on assault mode. There you go. Oh god, here it comes. Okay, we're leaving you alone. It was just a little see I got that fish out from under there. Now we're leaving you alone. That one will play all day. <laughs> all day long. All right, what are we calling now? Because that was about a three pound call. Yeah. We are calling a two pounder with a five pounder. Yeah. Calling twos for fives. I got a two and I got a three and a half. I got a four and a half, a three and a half, a two and three quarter, and a couple two and a halves, I think. Love it when exactly what you thought was going to happen actually happens. That's a beautiful thing. But I told Brad Holman, I said, listen, with what I'm on, I said, I'll be around him. I said, but I'm going to have to get fortunate two days, not just one. I got to get fortunate two days. Cause I got to do all this again tomorrow on the same bites, same stuff.
No, 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 no. Ya. Mm. Cold water. All right, 40 minutes left. Got about a 25, 30 minute run. Got about between 14 and 15 pounds. So I'm just gonna take my time, get back, weigh these suckers in, and see where it puts me today. It's a fun day. Well, that's it for day one. Just gotta weigh them in. Uh, first time this year, it has gone as planned on day one. If you have watched the AFCO Bass Boot Camp series, you will have seen the debacle that it has been on my day one. So now we'll see if I can put two days together. I really have no idea where this weight's going to put me. It's exactly what I thought I could catch if, if, if I made the right decisions. Uh, I don't feel like I got lucky today. So, you know, if I make the right decisions and get lucky, then you're up in the 17, 18 pound range. But I got five good ones. I got one that's basically right at two and a half that I was able to get rid of a couple two and three quarters and three some no I got two big ones don't I yeah yeah I got a four something and a three something and a three and a two and three quarter and a two and a half so I might not be in too bad of shape we'll just have to wait and see all right well we are back at the hotel after a long day on the water that actually flew by I ended up having 16-2 today, which put me in 13th place overall. So I've broken the curse of not performing well on the first day. So now I got to see if I can back it up on the second day. That's right. I have the St. Louis Blues shirt on. Stanley Cup champions. So it's been a good 24 hours. Got to see if we can back it up tomorrow, though. Um, everything came flipping. And it's not easy to get above 12 pounds flipping. Game plan for tomorrow. I mean, I, why not? Let's just catch another 16 and fish on Saturday. All right, we just did the national anthem, day two. About 119 out of 124. Got the man right here, Brad Holman. What up? Go out and. Uh, Hope for a repeat performance, put my head down. Brad actually has more rods on the front deck than I do. That is a first. That is a first. Oh, 119. Thank you, 119. Well, an hour later, now 40 minutes. I mean, I'm sitting on a soaking wet deck because we're soaking wet because I ate two of them. Would you call it? I, I wouldn't say we speared them. We got a little wet though. We speared one. Yeah, yeah. I, but I mean, I saw it coming. I had enough time to, to clench the cheeks and close my eyes. But it is what it is. So I am just making the call that I think deer stand is a little blown out. So we're going to start in pofers and see what happens. Number one, That's a good and one. it's a good one. Oh, I will take that all day. Is that you, Kevin? Yep. What's up? You got him? First flip of the day, three and three quarters. Nice, I heard you back there. What about you? How far back you go? What? How far back you go? I'm just, I, I just came down this gut. This thing's get got obliterated yesterday, but I figured it, I was gonna start in deer stand, and deer stand was too windy. 
I caught a uh, four and three quarter close to here with 11 o'clock yesterday. I know, I called you. What do you think of that boat ride? I steered one. See, dumb Okies. Hey, we're gonna roll. We're just gonna idle up over here. Oh. All the Okies are in the same damn spot. Almond's back here, I'm back here. <laughs> Frickin' Ladue's back there. There's a two pounder. Yeah. Take him. What'd you do with the net? That's a two and a half. Do what? I thought one ate it perfectly. Oh. I knew I see them back there. <laughs> Seen one hit back there. I'll take him too. Well, this is not how I was planning on doing this, but uh, I'll take it. Good one. Number five. I hope that celebration wasn't uh, too excessive. He had it. Tell me. I thought he felt good the first time he hit it. He was out there looking for it. How about that, Cole? What's that? Dude, he hit it three times. He hit it three times. It is about noon. I have probably 16 in the box, so pretty much what I had yesterday. I think I need one more good bite to fish tomorrow. Uh, gonna probably fish for about, we're doing it three, so I'm probably gonna leave me an hour to get back. Keep plugging away for the next couple hours. Like after that six, I was thinking, okay, like maybe, I, you know, maybe we'll get a couple more good bites or another bonus fish. Boat number one. No, 119. Right, 
You should have called that one. Yeah. Can you enter FLW right here? Usually I'm on I'm on your side, but I actually get to fish tomorrow, which is uh, which is kind of cool, but uh, but weird. Isn't it weird a little yeah, bit? It's a little bit weird. Like, like a good used, weird. Yeah, I'm used to like being like in the in the forest wood cup, like in the uh, in the hospitality room. Yeah, yeah. And yep. Like eating, snacking on eating things, meat. and you're in the air conditioning. Joe takes care of us on the snacks, but oh, uh, he does. He crushes it. Anyway, so made the cut. Fishing tomorrow. I'm gonna go take photos of you. Yeah, it's gonna be crazy. You can catch it. All right, so the meeting is over. <clears throat> And I am in the predicament where I uh, don't have a room and no one that I know made the cut. So I guess I'm just going to drive to Jasper and look for a room. Uh, that was pretty cool. That was fun. Um, kind of on a roll. That's three, three checks in a row here. So uh, first, second place, way ahead. Uh, third place, not that far ahead. So i'm shooting for third tomorrow obviously you're shooting for the win but they're like 18 point pounds they're like way ahead i have like 32 and they have like 40. i had to say good luck though thank you i enjoyed it dude take, take it easy good have luck. fun hey don't rank or something don't bother yeah i will i'll give him a call all right yeah i'm guessing i'm gonna check raven that was my co-anchor for today so um i can get on my phone and figure out where raven country is it's 4 30 in the morning and I found a room last night at the Rayburn Country Lodge. So we we're fixing to head to the ramp and go fishing on day three of the Costa FLW series on Sam Rayburn. Dickie Newberry, Albert Collins. Uh, the top 10's pretty stacked. 5.45 on the final day. I'm gonna start in deer stand where I started the morning of day one. Did not go in there yesterday because of the wind. Hope that wasn't a mistake. I might have been able to add more weight. I don't think so though. So uh, I'm in seventh, but I'm only about a couple pounds out of third. I'm like uh, 852 pounds out of second and first. You know, my first first tournament on Rayburn, and there's some absolute legends in here. So if you're gonna make it a top 10 in the coast, so this is kind of a cool one to do with so much history around here. You know, eat at the stump, stay at the Rayburn Inn. This cool stuff, so we're about ready to get going. Mm. That might have been a good one. Yeah. Mm. I don't know how I missed him. You hear that line sing for a second? <clears throat> Number one. Let's put number five in the box. I got about nine and a half, ten pounds, so definitely need some serious upgrading. But a lot earlier on the limit today, and four of them came flipping, so not bad. So, why'd you just start tournament fishing last year? This year, February. Why? Well, I mean, I've fished my whole life. I missed it. Never tournament fish? Yeah. Last year, I was busy. I was hiking all year. You were what? Well, hiking. What's that? You know, hiking in the mountains. Oh, hiking. Yeah. I got you. 
I hiked the Appalachian Trail. 2,190 miles. Dang. You like bring a fishing rod and stuff? Nah, it's just like you're just, mainly you're just walking all the time. Baits for the FFW Top 10. I have done this for Bass Zone hundreds. I've done this for Bass Zone thousands of times. I've never, uh, never been the guy with the baits. <laughs> Yahtzee's cool. Crushing it, probably. All right, moving right along to our pro in boat number seven this morning, Matt Pingrack out of Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. Had a great start on day one, 16 pounds, two ounces. Day two, 15 pounds, 15 ounces. Here we are on championship Saturday with another limit. Kitchen a limit every day looking for 16 pounds and seven ounces of bass to knock Chris out of the hot seat. Your limit today, Matt, 10 pounds, 15 ounces in the fourth place with 43 pounds even. Let's go talk. Well, we are headed home. Eighth place today only had, uh, had right at 11 pounds, but I knew it was going to be a absolute grind. There's a 300 boat tournament and another 100 boat tournament out on Rayburn, so I uh, did not really drop anything else, but I knew each place was a thousand bucks too, so glad to stay up in eighth, and now I'm driving seven hours home. Looking forward to getting back to Oklahoma, but uh, super proud of myself for what I did here. There are a bunch of really good guys that fished this tournament, uh, and I moved up uh, into the top 50 in the point standings after my Amistad debacle to kick the year off. This one kind of evened it out, so I've got a legit shot in October for the last two Costas on Lake of the Ozarks and Grand Lake. Good finishes there. Put me uh, put me in the Costa Championship in two different divisions, and uh, a good finish on Lake of the Ozarks puts me in the FLW Tour, so... That's all she wrote from East Texas.